What is going on, guys? Today, I'm going to be picking back up the series that I haven't been on for, like, probably a month or two now. Of course, the most recent video I did was the How Strong is Frankie video. It is the How Strong Are These Strong Hats video series. And today, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about the Straw Hat member, Tony Tony Chopper. After this video, all I will have left in this series is Nami and Usopp, and I guess potentially Jinbei if he comes and does a lot more stuff so we get a better indication of how strong he is, but for now, I'm going to be leaving Jinbei out of this. So let's just get right into this. First and foremost, what I wanted to talk about is Chopper's monster form. I, I, I thought for a while, I've been saying this in a lot of my videos, that not just do I think that Chopper's monster form is overrated, but the thing in One Piece is, it seems, like, the bigger you are, the less of an advantage you really have on the battlefield. To be honest, as far as we've seen from giants and just really large characters, the only real advantage they get is some kind of utility, as in they are providing some kind of support that you could only do with a large body, or they are destroying some inanimate objects of some sort. They're not actually using their largeness to have some kind of advantage over smaller people. In fact, a lot of the times when it's like a 1v1 battle, they seem to be at a disadvantage because they're, for whatever reason, moving significantly slower, and it's like they're trying to hit a fly, right? It's pretty hard to hit a fly because of how small and fast it is in comparison to you, and that's what it seems to be like in the One Piece world. The idea is, of course, that because they're so much bigger, they would be significantly physically stronger. However, in the One Piece world, as I've explained many times, the higher level people are beyond superhuman. I mean, we have we have Luffy hitting Dofi so hard that the impact his body makes with the ground completely destroys upheavals an entire city. So, I mean, it's not like everyone isn't already as powerful as a giant would be, if not significantly stronger than even that. Of course, they do have to be physically stronger to some extent. We even got to see in Rosa when Hyreden was able to fight off Machvis with ridiculous amounts of physical strength. However, I mean, again, I really don't know how much more powerful that would be if, like, Luffy was put in a similar situation, or even Zoro, who has been shown to be lifting weights and shit nonstop. So, I mean, there has to be some kind of advantage, but it seems relatively small compared to the disadvantage that they get from just being large and slow. And the point of me talking about all of this goes back to Chopper's monster form. It basically just makes him a lot larger and similar to a giant in that kind of manner, and I don't think he gains so much of an advantage unless, of course, like I said, it is for some kind of utility or support purpose. Sure, if he needs to reach some really high place or destroy a building or something, that's going to work pretty well, but as far as actually 1v1ing people, it doesn't seem like he gains so much of an advantage, he just becomes maybe a little bit stronger and significantly slower. On the other hand, we've seen him use his Kung Fu point, which really doesn't increase his size, I mean, maybe it does from his small form, but okay, like everything does. But compared to the monster form, that seems a lot better to me. We've seen on multiple occasions now, especially in Fisherman Island, when he uses his Kung Fu point, he is able to take on multiple enemies at once. Of course, they do seem to be pretty fodderish, but I mean, it's still pretty good for somebody to be able to take on like tens of opponents at once using pure speed and just martial arts abilities. So to be completely honest at this point in the story, I think that Chopper's monster form is one of his weaker forms when it comes to 1v1 combat or really him versus any amount of people, just him not having any kind of support. However, I think it is worth mentioning that in Whole Cake Island, he did accomplish quite a bit against Brulee and Randolph and all of her henchmen and whatnot by using his monster form. It seems like he was able to do a lot then, so I don't know, maybe Oda is going to make it make more sense and make it seem more powerful in the future. So, I don't know. It, it seems like it's been kind of useful recently, but we're going to have to see more on that. Another reason that I think his smaller forms are significantly more useful is because of an ability he had shown early in the series that we have not seen for basically ever, which is his scope ability. It is the ability he had to somehow just look through his hands and be able to detect an opponent's weakness. 
This ability seems so overpowered to me that I even made a video a long time ago, like two years ago, about how Chopper might end up being the way that they find out Kaido's weakness because they might bring back this scope ability, which is so overpowered. The Kaido thing we can get back to, I don't know whether or not that's gonna happen, but seriously, this is a really useful ability, especially in a 1v1 situation, which is pretty much what we're talking about when we're talking about how strong somebody is. Imagine you have two random characters going up against each other with just their abilities that they have at their disposal and you know you have to calculate who you think is going to win based on how powerful these abilities are and if they counter each other and whatnot so imagine that these people are going at it and it's a close battle and whatnot okay and then you give one of them the ability to find out the weakness of their opponent this seems like it would be an absolutely massive advantage like perhaps this huge battle is going on it's really close it's going back and forth and then just a voice appears in one of their heads and says, yeah, you know what, hit this guy right fucking here. If you hit this guy right here, you win automatically, GG. Of course, I understand it's more complicated than that. There's not necessarily going to be a weak point that just instantly ends the battle, but it does seem to give a huge advantage nevertheless to me. I also think that his ability to burrow underground and just dig these ridiculous holes is a pretty decent ability. It kind of came out of nowhere and I was quite surprised with it. I mean, we've had like multiple characters now that have had that as their entire ability, right? We've had the guy in Fishman Island and we also had Mr. Four's woman with him. She used that as her entire ability. She had the mole fruit, right? That was the entire point of the mole fruit, and he's just able to do it now, no problem. So that is basically all of his important abilities that he can use in any combat situation. So then the question remains with all of that together, how strong is Chopper? Well, like I said, it seems that he is pretty good at dealing with new world fodder, which is probably a decent achievement. I mean, if we weren't in the new world, I would reckon they might be kind of difficult to deal with. Before we got to the new world, it was basically understood that nobody who wasn't at least decent could even survive in the new world. So that has to be worth at least something. Speaking of people who apparently can survive in the new world, though still seem a little underwhelming, we have the vice admirals who haven't been given any names or any development whatsoever. Of course, I'm talking about all the vice admirals that appeared out of nowhere in Dress Rosa and were helping to stop the birdcage. They apparently can, to some extent, use both hockeys, but they haven't really been shown to do anything very useful in combat. They basically got run over by anyone who is even relatively important in Dressrosa. So with that being said, despite the fact that Chopper currently does not have either of the hockeys, I would reckon he could probably take on any of those vice admirals. I'm not saying it would be a complete blowout, but I would say he's probably right above their level just a little bit above them i think any of those kind of unnamed vice admirals he was to go up against he would probably be able to defeat i don't really like using the term vice admiral level because it has to be the largest variance among any of the character types we've seen in the series i mean we have the unnamed vice admirals then we have bastille who got absolutely smoked by sabo i mean of course sabo's super powerful but he got his head crushed by sabo's hand i mean come on give me a break and then we have people like momongo who seem extremely powerful though we don't really know yet it's really hard to say and of course then there's garp who's on a completely different level but i mean you know it it, it it really varies among all the other different types in the series so basically i would like to put him just a little bit above those unnamed vice admirals maybe even around the bastille range i mean i don't think he would do really any worse against sabo right sabo would probably just crush his head too he might even do a little bit better so maybe he is a little bit better than even that i don't know it's hard to say but i definitely think he's better than the unnamed vice admirals despite not having any hockey and he might be even a little bit better than that Honestly, Chopper in the New World hasn't really been put in any super tough situations or 1v1 battles, so it's really hard to put him anywhere specifically, but I think that's a decent general idea of where he could be. As far as where he would rank among the Straw Hats, because like I said, I'm going to be doing this in order, I started with Luffy, then went Zoro, Sanji, etc. If we are including Jinbei, I would say that makes him the 8th strongest on the crew, followed by Usopp and Nami and no particular order between those two. Of course, you'll have to see who I have as the not weakest in the next video. If you followed my channel for long enough, you already know my opinion on that. But yes, I would put him at eighth place if we are including Jinbei. So that wraps up pretty much this entire video. That's everything I want to talk about. That is how strong I think Tony Tony Chopper is. He is a little bit above the lowest of vice admirals. 
If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video, if you enjoyed it, if you thought it was a little crazy, I'm putting Chopper way too low. Maybe you think I'm highballing him. Maybe you think these unnamed vice admirals are way more powerful than him. If you have hockey, you automatically win. I usually agree with that, but they haven't really been shown to do anything with it. So let me know what you guys think about that. So with that all being said, I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day. Remember that Kaido may or may not be a Poneglyph, and I'll talk to you guys on Friday.